dear friend, the Lord Jesus loves you. Yes, he loves you and he wants you to also love him back. Thank you for finding time to watch this video. Do well to share it as well. Our topic today is, who is the Vicar General? My dear friend, one of the important courier offices in the Catholic Church is the office of the Vicar General, the VG. In our discussion, we shall take a general overview of it without getting into too much details, I hope. Our aim is to have a fair idea of who the VG is. My dear friend, Canon 475, which has two paragraphs, gives us the definition of who the VG is. The first paragraph of Canon 475 states, and I quote, in each diocese, the diocesan bishop must appoint a vicar general who is provided with ordinary power according to the norm of the following canons and who is to assist him in the governance of the whole diocese, unquote. First and foremost, my dear friend, we must note that the office of the VG is a mandatory office. In other words, the diocesan bishop cannot decide on his own authority to run the diocese without appointing a vicar general. Powers of the VG. Again, the canon under consideration states that the VG is provided with ordinary power. This is a power of governance, which can be broken into two. Canon 131 speaks for itself. The first paragraph states, and I quote, the ordinary power of governance is that which is joined to a certain office by the law itself, delegated that which is granted to a person, but not by means of an office, unquote. Dear friend, this canon just cited makes it abundantly clear that there are two types of this power of governance. One is ordinary power. A power is ordinary when it is joined or attached to a certain office. And the law states it. Two is delegated power. This speaks for itself because it shows that the one exercising that power is doing so in the name of another person, most often a superior. Dear friend, paragraph two of Canon 131 further divides this ordinary power into proper or vicarious. It states, and I quote, the ordinary power of governance can be either proper or vicarious, unquote. In other words, we have ordinary proper power and ordinary vicarious power. John P. B. et al. clarify something here for us. They say, and I quote, a diocesan bishop has ordinary proper power, but a vicar general has ordinary vicarious power. The lattice, that is the VG, power is ordinary because it comes with an office. But it is vicarious because it is exercised in the name of another, namely the bishop, unquote. Main function of the VG. Coming back to Canon 475, paragraph 1, we can state that the main function of the VG is to assist the bishop in the governance of the whole diocese. Dear friend, paragraph two of Canon 475 states, and I quote, as a general rule, one vicar general is to be appointed unless the size of the diocese, the number of inhabitants, or other pastoral reasons suggest 
otherwise, unquote. This means under normal circumstances, every diocese should have one VG. But should there be the need for more, the diocesan bishop has the liberty to appoint them. Therefore, don't be surprised if in future you hear the bishop of your diocese has decided to appoint more than one vicar general. A note here, the plural of vicar general is vicar general. Please don't forget. Dear friend, since Canon 475, paragraph 1, has made us aware that the VG is vested with ordinary power, let us state that this involves executive power as well. This is distinct from legislative or judicial power. Executive power, legislative power, and judicial power, these are all vested in the archbishop or the bishop of a diocese. Canon 479, paragraph 1 states, and I quote, by virtue of office, the vicar general has the executive power over the whole diocese, which belongs to the diocesan bishop by law, namely the power to place all administrative acts, except those, however, which the bishop has reserved to himself or which require a special mandate of the bishop by law." Unquote. Dear friend, let us go ahead and look at the appointment of the vicar general. Part of Canon 477, paragraph 1 states, and I quote, the diocesan bishop freely appoints a vicar general and an episcopal vicar and can freely remove them, unquote. Dear friend, in our discussion, our attention is on the VG. So we are not paying much attention to who an Episcopal Vicar is. The canon under review makes it clear that the appointment of the VG to office is based solely on the decision and choice of the diocesan bishop. In like manner, he is able to remove him from office freely. Of course, this power of the diocesan bishop must not be exercised capriciously. Dear friend, paragraph two of Canon 477 states, and I quote, when a vicar general is absent or legitimately impeded, a diocesan bishop can appoint another to take his place. The same norm applies to an episcopal vicar, unquote. The law is very realistic, my dear friend, in a sense that it knows that for one reason or another, there may be a time when the VG may be absent or legitimately impeded. That situation should not lead to the grinding to a halt the office of the VG. In that situation, the law gives the diocesan bishop the power to appoint, if you want, a substitute VG until the original VG returns to office. Now, we shall look at the qualifications of a VG. This is addressed in Canon 478. Paragraph 1 states, and I quote, a vicar general and an episcopal vicar are to be priests not less than 30 years old, doctors or licensed in canon law or theology, or at least truly expert in these disciplines and recommended by sound doctrine, integrity, prudence, and experience in handling matters." And My dear friend, the qualifications listed are based on, according to what John P. Bill et al. will say, canonical status, personal qualities, and professional credentials. The first point is that the VG must be a priest. He must be at least 30 years old. John P. Bill et al. state, and I quote, the nature 
of their role also requires certain professional qualifications, e.g. an advanced degree, either a licentiate or doctorate in canon law or theology. If this degree is lacking, there should be some demonstrated expertise in these areas of study and quote. Paragraph two of 478 tells us of some persons who cannot be appointed to the office of the VG. It states, and I quote, the function of vicar general and episcopal vicar can neither be coupled with the function of canon penitentiary nor be entrusted to blood relatives of the bishop up to the fourth degree, unquote. The first thing we notice is that the office of the VG is incompatible with the office of the canon penitentiary. Simply put, a canon penitentiary is a priest endowed with the ordinary faculty to remit in the internal sacramental forum, all undeclared latte sententia censures, which are not reserved to the apostolic see. Dear friend, the function of the canon penitentiary relates to internal forum matters, the confession, whereas those of the VG relate to the external forum. These two important offices are incompatible in one person. The second point is that the VG cannot be a blood relative of the bishop up to the fourth degree. According to the computation of John P. B. et al., the brothers, nephews, or uncles of the diocesan bishop his second and third degree relatives are excluded from the office of the vicar general or episcopal vicar. They add, the prohibition arises from a blood relationship up to the fourth degree. It does not say up to and including. Therefore, a fourth degree relative of the diocesan bishop, a first cousin, would be eligible to be a vicar general. And this is according to John P. Bill et al. My dear friend, going further, Canon 480 will let us know that the VG and the Episcopal vicars should not keep the diocesan bishop in the dark about their respective activities. It states, and I quote, a vicar general and an Episcopal vicar must report to the diocesan bishop concerning the more important affairs which are to be handled or have been handled, and they are never to act contrary to the intention and mind of the diocesan bishop." And dear friend, it is obvious that the VG must have a close personal relationship with the diocesan bishop I cannot imagine a situation in which the VG is not in a good relationship or talking terms with the diocesan bishop. The VG and those collaborating with the diocesan bishop can never forget that, notwithstanding the powers vested in them, at the end of the day, the diocesan bishop is responsible for the whole diocese. So, dear friend, Bearing this in mind, the VG will do well to keep the bishop informed about the more important affairs which are to be handled or have been handled, as the code has stated. In connection with this, with this is the understanding that the VG and the other Episcopal vicars represent the bishop in the discharge of their duties. Therefore, there is no way they can act contrary to the intention and mind of the diocesan bishop. We cannot have a rebellious VG. And need I say that 
they will know the intention and mind of the diocesan bishop if they keep close contact with him. Dear friend, cessation from office. We shall now conclude our discussion by, by looking at the cessation from office. Canon 481, paragraph 1 states, and I quote, the power of a vicar general and an episcopal vicar ceases at the expiration of the time of the mandate by resignation, by removal made known to them by the diocesan bishop without prejudice to canons 406 and 409, and at the vacancy of the episcopal see, unquote. So the power of the VG and the episcopal vicars ceases when one, the time of their mandate expires. Two, they resign from office. Three, they are removed from office by the diocesan bishop. And then four, when the episcopal see becomes vacant. No bishop, no vicar general. Dear friend, paragraph two of Canon 481 states, and I quote, when the function of the diocesan bishop is suspended, the power of a vicar general and an episcopal vicar is suspended also, unless they are bishops, unquote. Kindly take note, the last bit of the canon just cited states that unless they are bishops. This means not only priests can be vicars general or episcopal vicars, but bishops too can be appointed as such. And certainly these bishops would either be auxiliary or coadjutor bishops. My dear friend, the canon under review gives an additional reason for the cessation of the power of the priest vicars as, and I quote, when the function of the diocesan bishop is suspended. However, bishops holding those offices do not lose them when the diocesan bishop is suspended. My dear friend, in conclusion, we can say that the VG of every diocese is to help the diocesan bishop shoulder the responsibility of shepherding the people of God entrusted to his care. In one way or another, they can serve as the ears, the eyes, and nose of the diocesan bishop. If you have enjoyed this video, why don't you share it with your friends? Invite them to visit my YouTube channel and subscribe to it so that we can all keep deepening our Christian Catholic faith. I wish you joy and peace. Thank you.